In quantum information theory, a quantum circuit is a model for quantum computation in which a computation is a sequence of quantum gates, which are reversible transformations on a quantum mechanical analog of an n-bit register. This analogous structure is referred to as an n-qubit register. Topic: <laughs> Reversible classical logic gates. The elementary logic gates of a classical computer, other than the NOT gate, are not reversible. Thus, for instance, for an AND gate one cannot recover the two input bits from the output bit, for example, if the output bit is zero, we cannot tell from this whether the input bits are zero, one or one, zero or zero, zero. However, reversible gates in classical computers are easily constructed for bit strings of any length, moreover, these are actually of practical interest, since irreversible gates must always increase physical entropy. A reversible gate is a reversible function on n-bit data that returns n-bit data, where an n-bit data is a string of bits x1, x2, xn of length n. The set of n-bit data is the space 0, 1, n, which consists of two n strings of zeros and ones. More precisely, an n-bit reversible gate is a bijective mapping f from the set 0, 1, n of n-bit data onto itself. An example of such a reversible gate f is a mapping that applies a fixed permutation to its inputs. For reasons of practical engineering, one typically studies gates only for small values of n, e.g. n equals 1, n equals 2 or n equals 3. These gates can be easily described by tables. Topic: Quantum logic gates. To define quantum gates, we first need to specify the quantum replacement of an n-bit datum. The quantized version of classical n-bit space 0, 1, n is the Hilbert space H Q B n equals 2 0 1 n Display style h underscore operator name q b n equals l caret two zero one caret n. This is by definition the space of complex valued functions on zero one n and is naturally an inner product space. This space can also be regarded as consisting of linear superpositions of classical bit strings. Note that h q b n is a vector space over the complex numbers of dimension two n. The elements of this space are called n qubits. Using Dirac Ket notation, if x1, x2, xn is a classical bit string, then x1, x2, x n display style x underscore one x underscore two c d o t s x underscore n wrangle quad is a special n qubit corresponding to the function which maps this classical bit string to 1 and maps all other bit strings to 0. These two n special n qubits are called computational basis states. All n qubits are complex linear combinations of these computational basis states. Quantum logic gates, in contrast to classical logic gates, are always reversible. One requires a special kind of reversible function, namely a unitary mapping, that is, a linear transformation of a complex inner product space that preserves the Hermitian inner product. An n-qubit quantum gate is a unitary mapping U from the space HQB n of n-qubits onto itself. Typically, we are only interested in gates for small values of n. A reversible n-bit classical logic gate gives rise to a reversible n-bit quantum gate as follows, to each reversible n-bit logic gate f corresponds a quantum gate w f defined as follows w f x 1 x 2 x n equals f x 1 x 2 X N display style W underscore F X underscore one X underscore two C D O T S X underscore N wrangle equals F X underscore one X underscore two C D O T S X underscore N wrangle. Note that W F permutes the computational basis states. Of particular importance is the controlled knot gate, also called C N O T gate, W C N O T, defined on a quantized two qubit. 
Other examples of quantum logic gates derived from classical ones are the Toffoli gate and the Fredkin gate. However, the Hilbert space structure of the qubits permits many quantum gates that are not induced by classical ones. For example, a relative phase shift is a one qubit gate given by multiplication by the unitary matrix U theta equals E I theta O O one. Display style U underscore theta equals begin B matrix E caret I theta and zero zero and one end B matrix. So U theta zero equals E I theta zero U theta one equals one. Display style U underscore theta zero wrangle equals E caret I theta zero wrangle quad U underscore theta one wrangle equals one. Wrangle. Topic: Reversible logic circuits. Again, we consider first reversible classical computation. Conceptually, there is no difference between a reversible n-bit circuit and a reversible n-bit logic gate. Either one is just an invertible function on the space of n-bit data. However, as mentioned in the previous section, for engineering reasons we would like to have a small number of simple reversible gates, that can be put together to assemble any reversible circuit. To explain this assembly process, suppose we have a reversible n-bit gate f and a reversible m-bit gate g. Putting them together means producing a new circuit by connecting some set of k outputs of f to some set of k inputs of g as in the figure below. In that figure n equals 5, k equals 3 and m equals 7. The resulting circuit is also reversible and operates on n plus m minus k bits. We will refer to this scheme as a classical assemblage this concept corresponds to a technical definition in Kataev's pioneering paper cited below. In composing these reversible machines, it is important to ensure that the intermediate machines are also reversible. This condition assures that intermediate garbage is not created the net physical effect would be to increase entropy, which is one of the motivations for going through this exercise. Now it is possible to show that the Toffoli gate is a universal gate. This means that given any reversible classical n-bit circuit H, we can construct a classical assemblage of Toffoli gates in the above manner to produce an n plus m bit circuit F such that F x 1 x n 0 0 equals y 1 y n 0 0 display style f x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n under brace 0 dots 0 equals y underscore 1 l dots y underscore n under brace 0 l dots 0 where there are m under brace 0 inputs and y 1 y n equals h x 1 x n display style y underscore 1 l dots y underscore n equals h x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n notice that the end result always has a string of m zeros as the on kilobits no rubbish is ever produced, and so this computation is indeed one that, in a physical sense, generates no entropy. This issue is carefully discussed in Kataev's article. More generally, any function f bijective or not can be simulated by a circuit of Toffoli gates. Obviously, if the mapping fails to be injective, at some point in the simulation for example as the last step some garbage has to be produced. For quantum circuits a similar composition of qubit gates can be defined. That is, associated to any classical assemblage as above, we can produce a reversible quantum circuit when in place of f we have an n-qubit gate u and in place of g we have an m-qubit gate w. See illustration below. The fact that connecting gates this way gives rise to a unitary mapping on n plus m minus k qubit space is easy to check. It should also be noted that in a real quantum computer the physical connection between the gates is a major engineering challenge, since it is one of the places where decoherence may occur. There are also universality theorems for certain sets of well-known gates. Such a universality theorem exists, for instance, for the pair consisting of the single qubit phase gate U theta mentioned above for a suitable value of theta, together with the two qubit CNOT gate WCNOT. 
However, the universality theorem for the quantum case is somewhat weaker than the one for the classical case, it asserts only that any reversible n-qubit circuit can be approximated arbitrarily well by circuits assembled from these two elementary gates. Note that there are uncountably many possible single qubit phase gates, one for every possible angle θ, so they cannot all be represented by a finite circuit constructed from U θ, W C N O T. Topic: Quantum computations. So far, we have not shown how quantum circuits are used to perform computations. Since many important numerical problems reduce to computing a unitary transformation U on a finite dimensional space the celebrated discrete Fourier transform being a prime example, one might expect that some quantum circuit could be designed to carry out the transformation U in principle, one needs only to prepare an n-qubit state psi as an appropriate superposition of computational basis states for the input and measure the output U psi. Unfortunately, there are two problems with this. One cannot measure the phase of psi at any computational basis state so there is no way of reading out the complete answer. This is in the nature of measurement in quantum mechanics. There is no way to efficiently prepare the input state psi. This does not prevent quantum circuits for the discrete Fourier transform from being used as intermediate steps in other quantum circuits, but the use is more subtle. In fact quantum computations are probabilistic. We now provide a mathematical model for how quantum circuits can simulate probabilistic but classical computations. Consider an R-qubit circuit U with register space HQB R. U is thus a unitary map H Q B R H Q B R display style H underscore operator name Q B R right arrow H underscore operator name Q B R in order to associate this circuit to a classical mapping on bit strings we specify an input register X equals 0 1 M of M classical bits an output register y topic 0 1 n of n classical bits the contents x x1 xm of the classical input register are used to initialize the qubit register in some way ideally this would be done with the computational basis state x 0 equals x 1 x 2 x m 0 0 display style vec x 0 wrangle equals x underscore 1 x underscore 2 c d o t s x underscore m underbrace 0 dots 0 wrangle where there are rm underbraced zeroed inputs. Nevertheless, this perfect initialization is completely unrealistic. Let us assume, therefore that the initialization is a mixed state given by some density operator S which is near the idealized input in some appropriate metric, e.g. tr x 0 x 0 minus S delta Display style operator name tr left big vec x zero wrangle wrangle vec x zero s big right leq delta. Similarly, the output register space is related to the qubit register by a y valued observable. A note that observables in quantum mechanics are usually defined in terms of projection valued measures on R. If the variable happens to be discrete, the projection valued measure reduces to a Family E lambda indexed on some parameter lambda, ranging over a countable set. Similarly, a y valued observable can be associated with a family of pairwise orthogonal projections. A indexed by elements of y such that i equals y element of y e y. Display style i equals sum underscore y in y operator name e underscore y. Given a mixed state S, there corresponds a probability measure on y. Given by 
PR Y equals TR S E Y Display style operator name PR Y equals operator name TR S operator name E underscore Y the function f x y is computed by a circuit u h q b r h q b r to within epsilon if and only if for all bit strings x of length m x zero u e f x u x zero equals e f x U X zero U X zero one minus E display style left angle VEC X zero big U carrot asterisk operator name E underscore F X U big VEC X zero right wrangle equals left angle operator name E underscore F X U VEC X zero wrangle big U VEC X zero wrangle right wrangle GEQ one epsilon now TR S U E F X U minus X zero U E F X U X zero T R X zero x zero minus s u e f x u delta display style left operator name t r su caret asterisk operator name e underscore f x u left angle v e c x zero big u caret asterisk operator name e underscore f x u big v e c x zero right wrangle right l e q operator name t r big v e c x zero wrangle angle v e c x zero s big u U carrot asterisk operator name E underscore F X U L E Q delta so that T R S U E F X U one minus E minus delta display style operator name T R Su carrot asterisk operator name E underscore F X U G E Q one Epsilon delta theorem if epsilon plus delta p r y equals t r s u e y u display style operator name p r y equals operator name t r su caret asterisk operator name e underscore y u on y can be used to determine f x with an arbitrarily small probability of error by majority sampling for a sufficiently large sample size. Specifically, take k independent samples from the probability distribution p r on y and choose a value on which more than half of the samples agree. The probability that the value f x is sampled more than k, two times is at least 1 minus e minus 2 gamma 2 k display style 1 e caret minus 2 gamma caret 2 k where gamma equals one half epsilon delta. This follows by applying the Kernhoff bound. 